Okay, perfect. So, I just a few points before before we start the before we start the practice. Um, the, the first one is I, I, about the practice of Aikido. So Aikido, there's lots of principles which underline Aikido, which we, we talk about in terms of the training, which um, can be things like centering, balance, grounding, all these kind of things. The main principle that I, the, 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 so the core of Aikido is this idea of non-resistance, uh, which is a very, it's a kind of strange idea, but it, it's this idea of really opening up and, and letting, letting your experience be as it is and, and Basically, the idea of following natural principles. So all the moves that we're going to do today, they're, they're designed around natural principles of the body. And, and it's the main thing, especially for this class, is, is you don't want to force anything. So you don't want to be using force. You don't want to be using stress in the body. So just relax with it. Take it easy. And, and try not to force any of the exercises we do. It. So it's about just kind of opening up and being a little bit more expansive in it. Um, the second point with this is... Obviously, you're in most of you're in your own homes. Adapt the exercises that we do to kind of suit your environment. You know it better than I do. So just use a little bit of common sense. We won't do anything too extreme today, but obviously you're waving a stick around. Um, it's very easy to break something or do something. And also adapt it to your own body. So listen to your own body. You've maybe got injuries on some parts of the body. So if anything's stressful on the body, don't do it. So adapt, adapt the exercises to your own, your own body, your own environment. That's the, that's the main thing. Um, one more thing. Yeah, the other thing is if, if you get a little bit confused with the exercise, that's fine. But the main thing is don't get frustrated with them. So the, the main concept we use, I mean, it's traditional Japanese martial arts. So we, we tend to use the idea of observing, watching, and then just copying. And that method works. And when it stops working and I start to get confused, we use explanation, we use kind of uh, logic, all these kind of things. And if something doesn't make sense, ask me first. Then, then we can kind of, I can repeat it or we can clarify it. And if that doesn't work, the best thing to do is stop. Don't get frustrated, stop doing the exercise and just watch, just observe. Take a break, take some water. You can open up the gallery view here on Zoom and you can just watch, see what everyone else is doing in the class. So don't go, don't wait to frustration. Confusion's good, frustration's bad. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want to kind of get angry with yourself or whatever. So, and the main is just enjoy it. So. Uh, we will go into a little bit of practice. So we'll just start with a bowing. So traditional Japanese martial art, we bow in together. So you just want to place a stick at the left side, heels together. We just start with a Japanese greeting. It's a, what we say in Japanese is onegaishimas, and it basically means a, it's a kind of invitation to train together. So we use this together. Okay, okay, great. Onegaishimas. Okay, great. So we're just going to loosen the body up a little bit. So just place the stick to the side, just. Like it's just to wake up the body a little bit, introduce a little bit of mobility. So the first thing is just standing shoulder width apart. Just want to loosen up the body. Just everything nice and loose. Keep the shoulders loose, knees free. Relax through the wrists. Just feel the weight of the body. Let it settle into the ground. Gently pressing the heels down as you drop the weight. And coming up onto the toes as you raise it up. Take a few deep breaths if you like, just kind of open up the body. The main thing is just feel the whole structure, feel the weight entering the ground. A little bit of the lightness in the spine, length. Okay, bring the legs a little bit wider, just taking the arms into a rotation. You just want to keep them relaxed, just let them wrap around the body. Get a nice gentle twist. And again, just listen to the body in this case. Especially listen to the knees. You don't want to be kind of twisting against them, don't aggravate them. Keep everything nice and settled. And then just it just starts to open up, just gonna let that let the opposite foot come out of the ground a little bit, just as you're on the toes. Just introduce a little bit more of a twist into the body. Again, no stress, just nice and relaxed. Just trying to wake up the body a little bit. Great. Perfect. Okay, coming back to shoulder width apart. I'm just gonna to go to the hips. You just want to make nice big circles. 
you can do two things here. You can keep the spine kind of in this position where the head stays, or you can introduce a little bit of motion with the head as well. Just do what feels right. So again, it's just about opening the body a little bit of mobility, getting all the joints free and open. Just do what feels kind of right for you. Correct, and then changing the circle, changing the direction. Right, we're just going to bring the feet together, just to start, just the hands on the knees, just gently, probably waking the knees up a little bit, do some bit of warmth. Good, and then from here, gently bending, straightening the legs. And just take as far as comfortable, so naturally coming down, gently bending the knees back. Great, and then from here, just rotate it. Nice small circles, not too big. Try and keep the ankles kind of free. Just one direction, nice and smooth movement. Good, coming back to the center and then changing the direction. Coming out a little bit wider, just one step out, and then you're going to keep that circle in. Perfect. And then you're going to reverse the direction. So I'm just going to bring the knees in and then out to the circle. Out to the circle. Great. Okay, bring the legs a little bit wider. And then just settling the hips down. Ideally, you want the hips round about level with the knees. If you can, you can go a little bit lower. That's comfortable. And just gently rocking. So you might want to do like an up and down movement, a little bit side to side, just trying to open the hips out a little bit. Keep the upper body nice and relaxed. If you want, you can use the hands in the ground, you place them on the legs, wherever feels right. You're going to place the hands on the knees and you're just going to, as if you're looking over the shoulder, come in here, straighten this arm from the opposite side and just gently looking over the shoulder, coming back to the center, going to the other side. Just alternate between these two sides. It's going to create length through the spine as you find that rotation. Great, and then coming back into the center again, just gently let one leg straighten, just a little bit of weight into it, again, not too stressful, just settle into it, and then to the other side. Good, coming to the other side again, if you want, you can take it a little bit deeper, if that feels comfortable. If you feel totally comfortable, you can bring the foot, the toes up. Come all the way down, but again, just work within your own range of comfort. Nice and slowly changing the side again, and just take it as deep as. Okay, perfect. Let me just come back up to Sam. Just to place one leg in front of the other. So, as if you were on kind of train tracks with the feet, both toes pointing forward. Bit wide with the hips, and just think about pressing the back heel down, so you're stretching down the, the back of the leg. If that feels comfortable, just start to shift the weight forward into the, into the front leg a little bit, just increase the stretch down the leg. Good, releasing it, changing the side, and just get comfortable to sit into the hips, feet, both feet, both toes pointing forwards, the legs. If that's comfortable, just start to shift the weight a little bit. Great, you can change one more time. And then in this case, 
you're going to bring the back of the back heel up here take the opposite hand here and just gently taking the body through a spiral the top so a little bit to the top a little bit to the back a little bit to the side and you're going to create this kind of torsion through the body gently again just as far as comfortable keep going with that great that's it perfect and then changing the leg again through the one foot forward take the opposite hand bring that heel up just gently raising it through the body oh, perfect and slowly releasing great okay coming back to the center let's do a little bit for the hand so obviously we're doing weapon work it takes a lot of stress using on the hands the wrists so we're doing a lot of kind of grasping so we just kind of loosen the wrist up a little bit so you just start with as if you're kind of flicking water off the hands just start with this idea and you just want to flick the hands out so it's nice and gentle the main thing is just feel that again the heaviness in the arm and really as if you're kind of flicking water off it so it's all loose see if you can get that relaxation to go right to the wrist through to the fingers so you just want to kind of open the hands out Open all those connections. That's it, perfect. Great, and then taking the fingers together this way, palms together. If you like, if you've got mobility and you can close the forearms together, you just want to work with rotating, rolling the wrists. Just work in one direction. That's it. And then just for balance, just switch the grip on the hands, switch the weight and switch the rotation. Feel a little bit strange. Keep going the opposite way. Okay, perfect. Great. And then we just do a few, just nice fast, you're going to extend the fingers out and kind of splaying the hand. Think about the center of the palm and kind of pressing the fingers out. You just do this nice and fast, we do this together. Do about 20 or 30. Just nice, fast, rapid, expand and release. So, and try and get right to the fingertips. Kind of shooting out. So, good. Okay, great. Nice, fast. Now you know the reverse. So you're going to close the fist in. Again, think about the center of the hand. It's kind of closing in this way. So you're just going to kind of close, open, close, open. Once you have, if you just get the movement nice and sharp, it's a little bit fast. So you've got to release and then a close. Both hands together. That's uh, perfect. Good. And then just a few stretches for the wrist. You're going to take the, the palm out, a little bit of pressure at the shoulder, not too much, but you're just going to take the fingers here gently as if you're bending the fingers towards the shoulder. So you've got a little bit of pressure out the, the palm and you're gently just taking the fingers back. So stretching the whole underside of the hand. That's it. Okay, next one, you're gonna make a fist with it. And this goes gently out the, the, the fist, at the, the back of the hand, just taking underneath, keeping the fist quite tight, and then just gently, again, drawing the fist towards the armpit, in this case, just towards the body. That's it, perfect. And then last one, you take the palm down, fingers towards the ground. Again, just gently taking the fingers, a little bit of pressure out the palm, and then gently drawing the fingers towards the body again. Great. Super. Great, just shake that hand out, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So start with the palm out, fingers up. Just gently pressure out the palm, drawing back the fingers. Great, perfect. Great, making a fist, and then again, just onto the back of the back of the hand. Gently curling it out. Perfect. And then opening the palm out, taking the fingers, pressure out of the palm, drawing the fingers back towards the body. And slowly release it, shaking that hand off. Great. 
Okay, and then we just go to just loosening the whole body, aches. starting with the wrist, just at the top of the top of the head. Yeah, shaking them out nice and loose, keeping the shoulders relaxed, elbows relaxed. Then you're a little bit up and down. Good. Okay, drop the arms. Just take the arms into a circles. And nice and relaxed. You want to feel the kind of big, heavy ropes in, in, on the side of the ground. Perfect. Good. Take it into the legs. Just shake them out one at a time. Loosen the hip, the knee, ankle. Great. Change in the other side. Great. Right. Now you're going to plant the feet down, settle the body, and just introduce that whole motion to the body. So again, just keeping everything heavy. Similar to where we started, if you want to feel all the limbs again now, nice and free, hopefully nice and warm. Again, just feel the weight of the body. Now I want to pay particular attention. You see where my belt is, right at the center of your body. So my, my belt just right at the center, the physical center of my body. I just want to feel that point in the body. And you can do this by either just placing your hands there or just feel it, just sense it. With the body and feel that you're kind of creating a pulse that the movement's going to come from here and pass through the body so it's all the extremities of the body to the feet to the hands and to the top of the head and just feel that point in the body and you can explore you can make it big you can make it tight small you want to feel like a kind of pulse through the body right from the center of the body and try and feel this it's easy to think about the, the center of the body as the kind of front of it Feel that it's really inside the body as well. So like a kind of fingers width inside the body. And just feel that, just feel that point of the body. Okay. And you just want to make it smaller and smaller. So you can hardly feel the movement. Okay, let's come to a still point. Great. Okay, perfect. Okay, grab your stick or Joe, whatever you've got to use. And we'll do a little bit of work. This is a kind of Joe manipulation. So it's just to get used to the to the weapon, get used to manipulating it with the hands. And the main, the first thing is just getting used to the weight of the weapon in the body. So a lot of the weapon work involves kind of extending away from the body or shifting the grip with the hands. So just introduce a, a few concepts that we use later when we come to techniques. So the first thing you do is just find the center of the Joe or find the center of the stick, just directly in it. So you just want to feel that it's balanced equally. In the, in the hands. That's it. Now I just want you to fix the feet. So I want you to work with a sh shoulder width apart. We're going to work on a few alignments first with, as we do this exercise as well. So the first one, as you find the center, I just want you to think about the feet and I want you to think about this alignment, the hip, the knee and the feet all kind of going down into a line. So you just take the feet kind of hip width apart and just let the weight settle in. So the knees are a little bit relaxed. And then from here, taking a grip onto the, onto the jerk. And I just want to sort of rotate the forearm. So you're just working with this. That's uh, good. If you want, if, this, if the, the stick kind of feels heavy at first, you can just brace the arm at the front of the body. So you just kind of gently give yourself a little bit of support in the hand. If it feels okay, if it feels fine, just work with one, just work with one arm, just let the other arm relax. Good. And again, as you do, just feel that you've got the, the weights in one side of the body. And you just want to equally distribute the weight of the, the body through the feet. So just feel the weight centered in the base between the two, between the two feet. Relax. Knees relaxed, open. And as you're doing it, you're also playing with this rotation of the forearm. So we use these also to kind of increase the flexibility in the wrist. Add a little bit of strength to it. Good. Okay, perfect. And then you soon do the same, switch the hand, take it to the left side or the right side, depending on which one you've got. Again, just working with rotating through the forearm. So most of the mobility in the exercise, this is an easy one. But one of the problems with the weapon works, the shoulder tends to get over, over rotated. And this, the, if the shoulder goes into a kind of strange position, this is very easy to injure the shoulder. So what I want to think about as you do this is really relaxing the shoulder down towards the back of the body. And the elbow in this case is kind of dropped. And most of the, most of the motion in this is coming from the wrist and the forearm. Later when we come to Aikido, we use a lot of spiral work with the hands. And the most of that motion is kind of coming from that part of the body. So this is just to introduce this idea. 
shoulders lowered towards the back, elbows heavy, and really letting the forearm, the wrist, and the jaw, obviously, in extension. Take a nice kind of circular spiral movement. Great. Okay, great. I want you to change the other hand now. We're just going to slightly extend away from the body. So as if you're just reaching out with the arm. You can think of this two ways, just reaching out. Or if you know kind of karate or anything like this, anything where you're going to kind of do an extension away from the body, like a strike. But I don't put force into it. I just want to feel that you're kind of gently reaching out with it and staying in the center and then drawing it back to the body. So just reaching out and pulling back to the body. Keep, keep in the elbow in this case, again, close to the body. You don't have to be too far extended out or working in this kind of area. So again, for the shoulder to relax, the arm needs to be kind of in alignment here. So think as you do this, if you can see yourself or you can just kind of get a sense of yourself, think of the, the hand, the elbow and the shoulder basically coming into one line. So that you don't want to be working in these kind of areas. We can a lot of stress on the job. Just feel that it's kind of working here. So all the time I'm looking for the, this kind of alignment through the upper body. So the shoulder, elbow, and the hand. Just gently reaching out. Good. And again, just play with both sides. Left side, right side. Again, just listen to the body. Notice if there's a difference in one side or the other. One side might feel tighter, the movement might feel easier on one side. You might have a stronger grip on one hand. That's generally true. That's it. perfect. Good, great. Nice, nice, nice. Great. Just one point on this. Just be careful in this case that as you reach out, you don't let the upper body drift out with it. So if you notice this in terms of balance and structure, if I reach out and the upper body follows it, then I'll tend to, there's two things can happen. The body falls over or it goes into tension in the lower body. So generally what I want in, in terms of movement quality, the, the idea of balance is, is there's two parts of balance. In terms of martial arts, I use balance of the structure for power to generate power. So I'm looking for the balance so that later I can, I can press the ground through the, through the articulation. And the other reason is I want balance that I can move. So I want balance that I'm, I'm able to relax the body so that later I can take the body directly into the movement. And if I'm using tension in the lower body by holding the structure up, that limits my ability to move, basically. So it introduces rigidity into the body, which I either have to relax or I use the body kind of robotically. So just notice here the center balance in the body. As you reach out, you want the same sensation down. So think of this motion as a down primarily and an out, reaching out. So these two things go together. If I just do the out, the body will get kind of follow up. So allow the right body to drain down as you do it. And you're working with gravity. You're not kind of holding the structure off the ground. You're just allowing it to settle down to the ground. That's it. Perfect. Great. That's it. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Great. Next level. So we're going to take this down to a figure of eight. So what I want to think about is the tip of the weapon. You're going to use this same motion, but you're going to kind of cast the tip out this way. So this involves much more the hip. So just watch the movement here. Goes like this now. Just work in one side. You keep the wrist nice and relaxed, as relaxed as you can. Just want to connect into the joke. Again, from the center, you're working now this movement. Okay. That's it. Great. That's it. And then when you feel like it, just switch the hand. And just notice if one side feels easier, one shoulder might be a bit tighter. Just see if you can balance out the feeling in the body. Are you fully spinning it in your hand? Yeah, sorry. Are you fully spinning it in your hand or is it- No, it's, it's, it's not releasing. So when you do this one, you just keep a light contact. So it's, I'm not releasing it from the grip this way. You want to just keep that grip and it's doing this movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So as, as you go over this way, you just want to gently relax, relax the grip this way. But I'm basically just drawing it. You can think of this like a figure, we usually call this a figure of eight, but it's more like a kind of infinity symbol this way. So you've got that kind of motion. 
the main, I'll show this from the front as well. The main thing you want to think about is kind of casting the stick out. So it's going to pass to the sides, but the main motion is the sense of the, the, the tip coming out this way. Again, you've got the same structure. If you want to go back to the other, the other exercises, they, they basically, this, this is a progression. So you've got this motion of the wrist where I'm flexible. I've got this motion where I'm extending out. And then I've got this motion where I'm basically allowing the hit. Then I'll take the jaw flexibly through it. That's it. Great, good. And just keep changing hands with it. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. I'm using tools to see if I can show you the uh, direction of the stick. So I use something like this. I think it's really good to see. You basically take the tip out and you're, you're kind of casting it out. You can imagine this like, this is the same technique. Um, if you know any kind of flame um, jugglers that use torches and flames, they, they use these kind of techniques as well. But what I like to think about is the tip as it goes out and it's gonna just come back this way. So I focus on the tip that way and then coming back that way. So it goes that way, that. That is super slow, that way, here. That way, here. That way, here. So you're doing two things with this. You're, you're connecting the center of the body that hits to the stick, and you're also sending your intention out to the, to the tip of the weapon. The Joe's a great weapon because it's basically, a, it's basically a stick. You can use all parts of it. So we use every part of the weapon for, for strikes, for blocks, for attacks. And it's a really kind of versatile weapon. So not like the, the, the sword, the Bokken that some of you were in the class uh, last month which is a little bit more specific. The Joe's a very versatile weapon, so it's uh, much more, there's much more movement practices with it. Just get that idea back. Good. And then we'll build up a progression, the same, same progression, but now you're going to switch the hands each time. So a lot of the Joe we use is also for training the grip and training the idea of, of being able to control and switch the contact with the hands. So we're just going to start with the same motion that we began with, just this one. Now, all you're going to do from here is you're going to change the hands each time. And as you do, you're just going to take from underneath. You're going to bring the little fingers together, and then you're going to take it to the other side. So you can do this two ways. You can do a few on one side. You change, bring the palm up, bring the little fingers together, and then you switch sides. Once you get comfortable with the change, you can just alternate it each, each time. So you just want to get a sense that you're comfortably passing the stick from one side of the body to the other. And you feel all the time to kind of secure. So there's a switch, on, there's a switching point where I transition from one grip to the other. And you just want to make that nice and smooth. I don't want to feel, just be careful with this. I make a distinction between this Joe manipulation work and kind of baton twirling, where you will see baton twirling is where I kind of release the weapon and it spins up in the air and I maybe toss it up into the air and catch it. So we're, we're never releasing the hands from the weapon in this case. One hand's always going to be in control of the weapon. So I don't want to be in a, in a point where the stick's kind of out of control or out of the grip. So you want to all the time be in contact with the weapon with one of the hands. And it doesn't have to be a full grip. It just needs to be a kind of contact with it. And once you come to it, it just really alternated. Good. Good. And again, once you get comfortable with the grip, you can start to, I don't need to watch the hands. I don't need to really think about what they're doing. I can just go to the sensation of the body again, and dropping the weight through the structure, relaxing through the knees, length through the spine, opening the structure out, letting the weight settle, and gently letting the spine lengthen up to the top. And just let the hands do what they're doing. That's it, perfect. And then again, we'll just take to the next progression, which was to come out, reach out, and then come back. Same idea, you reach out. As you draw back, you just switch the grip, and then you reach out the other side. So nice and simple as it comes back, draw the elbow in, change the grip, send it out the other side. Again, you can do a few on one side. This is more comfortable than this, and then switch. You just want to work again that sensation of controlling gently with the stick. Sending 
Good, perfect. And again, once you've got the idea, once you've got the hands comfortably doing what they're doing, just start again, think about the quality in the body. And again, this sensation here, especially of letting the weight settle down as you reach out, let the weight gently drop towards the ground. So I'm allowing the central body to kind of hang towards the ground, not kind of rigidly off, kind of holding off the ground. So it's a really important point later for when we come to some techniques. So you're reaching out, sinking, settling down. That's it, perfect. Great, keep going. No, that's uh, really nice. Okay, good. Perfect. And then we're going to take it to the figure of eight movement. So we're working with this one. The same idea now, you're going to switch. Whenever you switch, it's again, palm up, little fingers together. And in this case, it's going to be at the side of the body. So I'll just show it a few times, nice and slow. You come here as you change at the side, come to here. So you're letting one hand take over this way, change your palm up, and then you take it over. This <laughs> one. Good. Good. And again, see, yeah, <laughs> see this is a progression as well. So if you get lost with this one, go back to the last one where you're just doing this. And this is a kind of natural progression. Once I've got that, I can start to add the hip work into it. So if you just watch my hip, watch my, the center of my body now, I'm basically doing this motion with the hips. So I'm allowing the hips to roll the hand. So it's another key theme with, it, with Aikido, we're looking for the, the center of the body to control the periphery. So in this case, the arm, I want the movement actually to come from the center of the body, but first just go to the idea of switching the hands. Yeah. Good. And again, play with it. You can do a few on one side and then when you're ready, switch. But again, if you're comfortable with it, just switch every time. That's it. And this is definitely one of those exercises, the less I try with it, the, the easier it gets. So this is a kind of tricky one, but I've got a little bit of release and get out of my kind of uh, thinking brain and go into my kind of feeling, feeling, feel the body. And again, if you've got to the stage where you're kind of comfortable with the hands, just allow them to do what they're doing. Again, think about the weight settling into the ground. So in this case, you've got a little bit more movement through the body. You've got the hips rotating. And you've got this kind of motion. And again, I'm looking for the structure to be ground here. So the main thing with this is once you've got it, just watch for the body kind of doing things like this, where it's kind of swaying in and out of balance. This is okay, but see if you can get to a stage where you can just drop, drop the weight down, let the structure settle. And it's as if the hands just move around the center of it. And if you're comfortable with this, you can start to take the speed up. And you can do it nice and controlled. This is a lot of, lots of things in this exercise, but the, one of the main things is idea of centering the body and centering that you've got all this activity happening around the body with the weapon and the arms, and you want to basically get to this point where you can calm the, body, the center of the body down, let it relax and everything just happens around it. That's one of the kind of key points of this exercise. And again, if you get stuck with it, just drop down the progression, go back to these where you're just reaching out, just turning the stick. Yep. Yeah. Good. good. Looking good. Great, great, great. Very nice. Great. Last thing we'll do with this, if you can keep this exercise going, you want to now start to bring the legs into it. So I just want you to gently hold in the same spot. So you're just stepping the feet together and then back. Stepping together and back, and you want to bring this motion in. So you want to now pair the legs and the arms together. So the left, left hand as it takes over will bring the left leg in, and the right hand will bring the right leg in. So you're just holding the spot, taking that motion in. So go to your left, right, left, right. <laughs> Okay, I'll do a, it, it's, this is a slightly easier one. Bring both hands onto the weapon here and just think, find this movement. And it's, this is like a kind of kayaking motion with the arm, you're kind of rowing the arms with it this way. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. And once you've got that, think about the legs. So you're just gonna switch the legs each time. That's it. 
do this slow to start because what you'll find is your, your hands are your hands are quicker than your legs so you'll find this kind of thing happening but the, oh, my legs get left behind so go at the speed with go at the speed of your legs basically it would be like it's like walking with the arms kind of go like this so allow the allow the lower body to control the upper body in this case so just go at the speed which means slightly slowing the legs down uh, it's like slowing the arms down where you can gently step step in step back step in step back that's it. If you feel comfortable with this, also with the with the two hands on it, you can open this out so that you've just got one hand control. On it. So again, just go to what feels comfortable. Generally, two hands on feels a little bit easier. That's it. Great. Keep going. Just a quick look. Good. If you're still smiling at this point, it's good. Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Okay, good. Good. good, great. Nice. Good. Nice. And again, if you kind of lose the coordination again, just stop, give yourself a bit of a break, maybe take some water, a coffee, tea. Um, just so you can refine that connection. Again, this kind of progression. So feel free, totally feel free to kind of work up and down. It. So you can do the same exercises, changing the legs, just with this one, this kind of reaching out. But the main thing, the important thing here, it's not necessarily, it's not the turning of the Joe, it's the coordination now between the hands and the feet. So the, one of the main points of Aikido is that I want to start to integrate the whole body together. And we start that by this, just a simple kind of same side connection. So right foot, right hand left foot left hand and then if i can get that again you can take it this way but the main thing is that just feeling that connection the feet that's it perfect good <laughs> great 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 good the main thing here is don't hit yourself but it's not, don't hit yourself in the head, don't hit yourself in the legs. It's very easy to do. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. We're going to go into some techniques now. So we'll we'll work with uh, some basic strikes with it. So those who were that came to the, the Balkan class, the sword class, those cut the, those movements were basically primarily based on the cutting of the sword. So you've got a sharp weapon in the case you would have a sword, and it's based on the kind of cutting motion. With the Joe, because it's basically a stick, so wooden wooden step, and this is the weapon. There's no kind of replacement for it. This this is the kind of weapon that will be used in a combat situation. It's mainly the main use of it is a, is an idea of thrusting with the tip of it. So the the, the movement we're going to work on today is the idea of thrusting with the with the tip of the weapon. The origins of this weapon. There's two origins for the weapon in the Aikido Joe work. Is one of the first ones a spear. So if you imagine a kind of bladed uh, spear at the uh, spear at the end of the weapon and the other is a bayonet so if you imagine like a rifle with a bayonet at the end of it so these are the these are two main influence that we've got for for the joe work in aikido so the main movement with that if it's a bayonet is thrusting and again with the spear is thrusting with it and those movements kind of contain there's a few modifications we make because we're working with just a, obviously a stick not a pointy object but the main idea is this is this idea of thrusting with the weapon so We'll just work first with the idea of the stance. So in Aikido, we're always working with the stance we call hanmi, and this basically puts the body on one side all the time. So you'll you'll if you're familiar with any kind of combat style, maybe boxing or karate or anything like this, you'll generally see a stance which is square on, so that the hips are square on. You get this kind of square posture. If you're kind of combat stance, it's a nice stance. It's stable and it allows me to generate power. In Aikido, we're looking for a slightly different stance. We're looking for it's a stance that originates from weapon work. But it's a stance where I basically got half of the body forward all the time. So in this case, we're just going to start with the left leg and using the joe to kind of help us get into the position. I just want you to take a nice natural stance, and you're just going to take the joe in the or the stick in the left hand, just in just in front of the left foot in this case. So you just want the again same principles. You want the weight to be dropped down, knees are relaxed, shoulders are relaxed to the side of the body, and the spine's just gently extending up to the to the ceiling, and the joe's just comfortably in front of the body. It's just that. 
So just be careful this. You might think like martial arts is well known for stances and postures. So you might go into a position like this, like this. I'm kind of ready for this position. This is okay, but it's a little bit tense. So the, the, the analogy I use for this is like waiting for a bus. So you want to be relaxed, you want to be calm, and it's a really a neutral posture. So and the idea of like waiting for a bus is also, I've got a little bit of intention, but I want the stretch to be relaxed. I might be waiting for a long time. You might be here for like a half an hour. So you want to have a, re a relaxed posture in this case. You don't want to be tense, especially in the upper body. So just allow everything to drop down. And then from here, this position, we're just going to start to come into Kamai, so coming into a ready position. This is a ski Kamai, so go into a thrusting position. You're going to drop the leg forward, and you're going to find the stick here. So I'll just show this a few times. You're going from this position. You know, the back hand come in, and you're going to take the back of the weapon with it, the back of the stick. At the same time, you're bringing the left leg in, you're widening your stance, and you're just dropping the weight down a little bit more. So this is about going from a neutral position, again, like waiting for a bust, nice and relaxed, and then you're going to a much more active position here. I like in this position, this is a kind of ready position. This is like, I think about a cat, just before it's ready to pounce, it goes into a kind of room position, and then boom, it's ready to move. So you're looking for a position here where I can basically go straight into a, an attack. So you're looking for this position. So I'm relaxed, the knees are open again, the upper body's relaxed, but I'm also got there's a sense of preparedness. So I'm ready to, to go into the next movement this way. So just through that, you're just gonna switch from this position to this position. Great. Just give that a try. So just work in the left side. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A few specifics. You might seem they're really obvious, but they're not necessarily. So one of the like I said one of the origins was the bayonet. So the, the, the stance we adopt with this is a little bit like you've got a rifle. So if you imagine you're holding a long rifle in the body. You're going to have the rifle on this side of the body. And as the body's forward, you're going to have a, a, a canter to the body where I'm basically at the side of it. So you don't want, in this case, the, the joke to be this side of the body, obviously. And you don't want to be, in this case, kind of down the center of the body being like this, something like that. So you want to find a posture in this case where the, the body's on this side of the weapon. And the joke in this case, we're going to load it to, towards the back hip here. Okay. So as you go to here, the, the left foot's going to come in. I let the geo come to the right side of the body. And I just allow that right hand to just settle towards the right hip. So again, it's just the position where I'm kind of ready. I don't want to be loaded to the front because we're, we're later we're going to go into a thrusting movement, which involves rolling through the back of the body. So I'm going to kind of prepare the body here. The front hand, just let it fall naturally on the weapon here. So I don't want to be too far forward where it's going to pull the structure forward. I don't want to be too far back where I'm kind of crunched. Down. So I want to kind of open that arm, let the body expand here. So the shoulders are nice and wide here in that position. Okay. The main thing to feel with the grip, we've got a kind of really specific grip that we use in Aikido. Um, it's, it's really specific in that it's not really something we use um, a lot in terms, of, in terms of daily life. So if you imagine like a hammer grip, which would be something like that, this way. If I open the fins in this position, they're kind of pointing down. So more my kind of energy and my focus is going down towards the ground. That's fine for a hammer when I'm hitting something, hitting a nail and I'm, I'm kind of hammering something to the ground. With the Joe, what you're looking for is a grip where if I open the hand, my fingers are basically pointing the direction I'm, I'm kind of focusing my energy towards. So just play with this. You want a grip here where the, the, this part of the hand is going to kind of cushion down onto the Joe. So, the grip primarily focuses the same with the bokken and the sword in the back two fingers. So the back of the grip is the, is the kind of primary focus rather than the front, which tends to engage the front, the bicep, the, the top of the shoulder. I want to feel that the grip is basically loading into the back. Just kind of feel that connection again. Just both releasing it and you want to feel that the hands are kind of in this position rather than something like that. And the same with the back hand. I don't want to be in some, a position like this when the arm's in that kind of position. I want to be in a position where I'm actually, the fingers are kind of pointing down towards I'm going. So you've got this kind of position. You can let that, the front two fingers can be really loose. So they're hardly gripping the jaw at all. They're just either wrapped around. We can just kind of place them here. We just want to feel that the jaw is kind of comfortable in the grip. That's it. That's it. Perfect. 
Yeah, good, good, good. Great. Okay, we'll go into a little bit of thrusting work. Just before we do, we're just going to get the motion. There's a specific way we use the weapon. So if if I if I have a two hands gripping it and I go to thrust with it, I do this kind of motion. So it's basically the arms doing this. So what I allow in this case with the Joe is the back hand's going to stay strongly gripped and the front hand is going to allow the Joe to feed through the grip. Imagine this is a bit tricky depending on what stick you've got. Obviously, with the, these Joes, they're nice, smooth, plain wood. So it allows me to kind of feed the Joe right through. So I just want to explain this the back hand's on the Joe, gripping, and the front hand just keep it, find the loose grip where you can basically feed it through. And through that movement, it's kind of resting in the fingers. So it wants to be open enough that I can feed it through, but not open enough that, it's, that I'm going to kind of lose the contact with the weapon. And if I'm too tight on it, you probably get this kind of squeaky down the weapon. So you want to be relaxed enough that you can feed it through. That's it. The movement quality that you're looking for is like a pendulum from the back arm swinging through. So the movement, rather than a straight line movement, like you would do like a maybe a snooker cue, you want to do a kind of arcing movement, which goes from a low to high movement. So you've got this kind of motion and it's like a kind of pendulum swing. Uh, so just work with that, just in that area. Good. Very good. Okay, we'll just put this all together before we go into actually striking with it. So I want you to find this position. I want you to come in the left side, and then I want you to just gently, we're just going to work the legs, you're going to step in, and then just let that roll through. So okay, just do about three or four kind of movements through with this, and then come back. So you drop into the Kamai here, into the ready position. You're going to now release through the feet and just find that position, just do a few. Gently and then draw the body back. So you're just going to use the side dropping into Kamai and then sending the body into motion through the gel and then coming back. That's it. So you've got neutral, you've got engaged, and then you've got an active movement. And you just want to let the body settle and relax all the way through. Good. The main thing you might notice with this, I get an, I'm a neutral, I'm nice and calm. And as I go into the movement, and gradually increase tension and the body starts to stiffen up as I go into the kind of active. So see if you can kind of feed this calm, relaxed position. Through Michael, that. I have a question. Yeah, sure, go ahead, Anna. Yes, um, I'm somehow puzzled with, uh, with the direction, uh, right or left. I start with my left and so I get very confused and I'm always starting or ending with the right and so... Okay. Do, do a few, let me see. Just just go through the, the movement. Let me see if I can. I start with the left, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Keep all this, the, the, all we'll do today is working with the left side. So we'll just. Yeah, somehow, left. Um, yes. I have always difficulties with left and right. So. Yeah, me too. I'm a bit, yeah, slightly <laughs> left and right. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to yeah 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 the, the main thing with this the main movement with this is that just watch the back hand you want to let the front hands loose and you're just gonna feed it through so the hands can do that kind of motion you see that it's your from this side it goes like that. So just feeding the weapon through that's it and you come back and just release it that way okay so, oh. mm -hmm. that's it that's it that's it and drop it back so we do a few here and then we'll go into a strike. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 great. So, perfect. So we'll bring this now into strike. So what I want you to do is start in this position, this ready position. We're going to take this straight into a strike now. So just show a few times and then we'll, we'll, we'll do a few together. But what you want to know is the whole body's going to go in. You keep this relaxed. And then you bring the body into focus. So you're actively now channeling your energy through the tip of the weapon. Usually best to kind of choose a target, which can be something on the wall, something far away, hopefully you're not going to hit it. 
but just have the feeling now everything goes towards it and the, the, wet, the body snaps into it now. So it's so similar to doing a, a ski in a, or a punch in, in a, as a strike. You've got all the body coming into focus. So you've got this kind of feeling. Don't worry about power and speed in this point. Just think about connecting. So again, it's feet, hands come together and then coming back. Feet together and then coming back. So each time you just want to draw back into this, this active, uh, this kind of command ready position. You draw the body in and bring the body back. The feet in this case, we're always working in a two step. So the, the legs go like this, the left leg and then the right leg comes in. And then I release the back foot, bring the, bring the front foot back. So you're doing always going to shuffle one, two, and one, two. One, two, one, two. And you just want the whole body to go with the, with the feet. The key thing here is the, is the movement of the hips so that the feet are able to kind of support the hips. So the hips go in and the hips come back. And with the weapon, the hips go in, focus through the tip of the weapon, and then I release it, come back to neutral. A few times there. Good. 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 Nice. Nice. Are you supposed to push forward as you move forward? Ah, interesting. Yeah, good question. In this one, we're always, in a way, you always want to be using the ground. So there's, there's two ways I can use the ground. I can press out of it this way, or I can let the body press into it. So in this case, we're using a kind of compression gang. So when you, if you think about this movement, if I, if I want to keep the ground with me, I'm going to press the structure through the back leg, and that's going to release the front leg to be able to move. So what we're working with is a kind of compression down the back leg and then pressing into it this way. And then if I finish, I just want the weight to settle into to both legs this way and then coming back. But the primary kind of force we're using this one is a kind of settling compression down the back leg. So I'm pressing the, in this case, my right leg, pressing the foot down. And then I let that, let the structure, because it's balanced on the top of it, take it forward this way. So that, forward, that yeah, that forward motion is kind of based in a downwards compression with the ground. So in a way you're kind of falling into the ground, but you're using it to press the body forward. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, good. So there's two, there's two points I want to focus on, which is the focus at the, at the end of the strike. So the, the end of it, you want the feeling that everything's coming into concentration. This. So the whole body goes into a kind of frame. It's not closing the body. It's working with expansion, but the whole body goes concentrated. So what I'm using is, is that just as the weapon reaches the end of the strike, I close the grip onto the weapon. So I make that tight and all the connection in the body goes, switches on. So in Japanese, this is like the kime. This is where, the, where you get, if you watch the tip of the weapon, the weapon goes this way. And that's where the hands are really working together. And I'm sending all my intention, all my energy, all my concentration down to the tip of the weapon. But everything at the end of it's got a snap. So there's a kind of focus. So you want a kind of relaxed, expanded focus. You don't want to be working in a oh, kind of rigid way, but you just want to be working with a relaxed, but focus the end of it. Yes, focus, the end of it. And at the end of it, just allow it to settle. So find that focus, just allow the body to settle into it. And then draw the body back. So really take your time with it. That's it. That's, that's, that's. And 
just to sort of confuse the body for the last couple of minutes, switch the sides, so switch everything over. So you go to the right side now. Left hand at the base of the jaw, right foot forward. And you can, again, nice basic for us. See if you, you can, again, you can see this as a progression, working with this movement this way, and then just working with the idea of shifting the body in. And then if you've got that, just play with the idea of thrusting with it. So again, bringing the body into focus and a snap at the end of the weapon. If you feel kind of totally strange, the right side feels really weird. Just go back to the left, do a few on the left. So you can find that kind of feeling you had here on the left and then switch back over to the right. And you can nice, relax, but at the end of the strike, nice and concentrated. And then release it. Good. Okay, but last couple of minutes with this. I wanted to use objects in the room, so you're just going to use them as focus. Obviously, don't use anything where you're going to hit it and break it. But see if you can use it, if you're comfortable with it, get really close to it where you're kind of in, in the kind of striking distance. And just play with the idea now is, is to take that technique or take this very simple technique and just use it now for connection. So I just wanted to kind of move around the room, move around your space. Bring out a lot of objects in this room that the dojo is probably quite clean, but find, find something that kind of draws your attention. Next, you kind of come out to it and then find the strike. Don't make contact with it, don't hit it, but just allow your attention to focus onto it. So, we're trying to now externalize that connection, but again, just move around the space. Just the eyes have to naturally step onto something. So I got this object, focus the come eye onto it, and then rah, thrust towards it. And just keep all your attention drawn to that object, and then you're just going to release it. You can use the same object, you can use different objects. You can mix it left side, right side. But you're training now your focus and your attention with the strike. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So feel free to be drawn to different levels as well. So it might be a lower object, might be something high, but allow the body to kind of adapt to it naturally. So a little bit higher. Let the body adapt to it. So just feel free to now just explore that strike. Good. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Nice. It's a little bit where Aikido goes into daily life. I mean, it's basically a movement practice or consciousness movement practice. So just notice these kind of things happening. So these happen probably during the day. My phone rings and I just like this. And I try and grab it like this. So I'm out totally out of balance as I grab it. So this tends to happen also with the weapon. I've got a target, I'm going to attack it, and uh, the body gets pulled out. So I'm totally out of balance. Again, I lose power with this, but I, the main thing is I lose is freedom of movement. So I lose my ability to, to move into another, into another position. So just think of this as contact and very to bring in the body into balance as you do it. So just the last few, the last few 30 seconds. So not as concentrated, but really think about the quality of balance and, and contact through the, through the strike. 
And if you get kind of stuck with that, just do this as a kind of contact exercise. You just move and make contact with the object. You move and make contact. But I want to feel that I've, I've got a quality of, of, of movement in the body where it gives me contact with the ground, contact with my structure. And the other important thing is, is that I'm able to just move from that position. So these are the main kind of qualities we're looking for. And we're using the gel just to channel all that energy down and focus it to a part of the inner place. Okay. Last, last, last seconds. Perfect. Very good. Okay, great. So we've come to the end of the practice. If you have any questions at all at the end, or you want to repeat anything or go over anything, just, just let me know at the end. But we'll take a bow out together. I hope you find it useful or enjoyable or entertaining. Um, but just let me know if you've got any comments or questions or anything. Yes. Yes. But we'll bow out together. In Japanese, you say, Domo arigato gozaimashita. And this uh, means thank you very much for what you have done or what we've done together. So it's like, just a greeting at the end. Okay. Good. Okay. No more. Okay. Okay. No. Oh. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Hope you found it useful.